Sherbo. Welcome to Jenny Sherbo Performance Horses. Today um, I'm on my little four-year-old reigning mare and we're going to go over just some general stuff that we do every day and hopefully it helps you guys. We're going to start out with some circles and talk about frame and collection and rhythm and then we're going to work our way into spins. So um, this is something real typical that we do every day. We just bring them out and we've got a little mental checklist that we go over to see how our horse is feeling. And the main thing is, is that we're going to put them on a circle and we do not want to be on the rail. We want to pick a track, a circle off of the rail, probably 10 or 12 feet off of the rail. And we want to stay off of the rail all the way around and ride in that same circle. And if the horse leans outside the circle, then we'll use our leg and maybe our guide, which is our hand, to go back to the circle. If they lean to the inside, then we'll use our inside leg and maybe a little guide to go back to the circle. And every time they fall off that circle, we'll just put them right back on the circle. If we go to lift up, we expect our horse to be soft and drop in collection. And if I use my leg, I would lift up a little bit and use my leg and I expect her to move away from my leg. If I lift up here and bump my legs, she'll collect and be soft in the face. If I use my left leg, I expect her to move to the right. And all of that applies to the circle. And when we're going forward and I put my hand down, she'll usually drop her head down. So we're gonna go ahead and put her on the circle and see what we've got. Another thing is, is every horse has a stiff side and a, and a softer side. So this particular mare um, tends to actually have too much bend to the right and, and she has so much bend in her rib cage that she wants to float away. So I'm constantly straightening her out to the right. But then when I go to the left, she's a little bit stiff. So I've got to lift and really use a lot of left leg and work on that rib cage to get that frame, that bend to the inside of the circle. Um, we definitely don't want their heads to hang to the outside of the circle. We want them to hang to the inside of the circle, which is that bend or that curve shape. But the main thing is, is we don't just want their head like this. It has a lot to do with their body. We want their rib cage to bend. It's the difference between coming here, rib cage, versus just tilting their head. So, and the rib cage comes from the leg. The rib cage on the horse is right underneath my leg. So, she's a little stiff when I come here to the left, so I'm going to be using my left leg, and I'll show you a few key points in that. So, I'll just put her directly onto her circle. Remember that her circle is not on the rail. I have a track in my mind. I'm going to look to where I'm going. And I like to think of it as an octagon. I've got a spot here. 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 And I just keep on riding that octagon, riding those points so that I know where I'm going. And I check and make sure that my horse is right with me on all of those points. Now, there's been a few times Right here, she feels like she's leaning in. So I'll just lift my hand up and use my inside leg and ride her rib cage out to my point. We'll see if she does it again. She still feels a little stiff. I'm gonna lift, use my left leg, soften that rib cage out there to the right. Feels a little stiff right here. And it's important to keep her shoulders on the circle and not let her shoulders fall off the circle. There, she came back really soft right there. Hit my points really well right here. She really clicked in. Right here, she dove off. Oh. I just released my legs, quit riding with the rhythm in my body, and say whoa, and just let her take a breath. Notice that I stopped at the one place that she was having trouble. This is the one spot on her circle right up there that she was wanting to get a little stiff and dive in. So this is the spot that I let her relax and sit here and pet on her a little bit, because those last two circles, she just stayed nice and soft and dropped her head nice and quiet and I didn't even have to use my leg. She just really softened up for me. 
So now we'll go ahead and go the other way. When we go to go the other way, I'm just going to first look, then guide, release my right leg, and give just a little bit of pressure with my left leg, which is my rollback. And then again, I'm looking up to my circle. She needs a little frame this way. I'll use my right leg and lift and get that frame. Then I'll drop her down onto her circle. I will go ahead and give her a little kiss and send her out to her circle. Again, I'm thinking of riding to my octagon to this point, to that point, to this point. To that point, to this point, I know exactly what dirt clod I want to ride over. And my guide hand, which is the hand on the reins, is where I point it. Wherever I point my hand is where she should go. That's what guiding is. The definition is of reining is willingness to be guided on a circle. So wherever I point my hand, she should guide. So if you'll notice, she has a lot of frame this way, and I haven't had to use my inside leg to send a rib cage to the outside at all. Because remember what I said at the beginning, she has almost too much bend this way. A lot of times I've actually got to try to straighten her out like that right there. Lift, I'll actually use my left leg and put her back on the circle because she floats to the outside of the circle this way. Lift, use my left leg, send her back to the circle. Good, that time she straightened herself up quite a bit more. Good. Now she's really starting to guide for herself, which is the, the point. Ooh. Notice that when I stop, or even if I were to sink to the walk, I continue my guide. Just because I slow down doesn't mean I let her shoulders drop over here or dive to the inside. She needs to stay up straight even when I stop or slow down. I can't um, drop my guide in any direction even just because I slow down or go. The guide is very important. The guide is what's going to tell her where to go. If we want them to follow a guide, then we've got to be very religious about giving them a guide. She knows to go where I guide or point her because she's trained to stay between these two reins. And if I guide over here, then the reins move over there. Then I let her be in the middle of those reins. Okay, if I want to go over there, I guide her over here. And the neck rein hits her and she knows to be in the middle of those reins. So if I want to go over there, I point my hand over there aka guide over there. I want to go over there, I point over there. I guide her over there. Right there she went a little forward, I'll ask her to back up, which is just a movement of my feet. Good. Okay, so now we're going to talk about spins a little bit. And this mare has a tendency to spin really good. She gets plussed at all the horse shows um, to the right, but she ironically can have a little bit too much bend to the left. Because remember I said on her circles, she has too much bend to the right. But in her spin, she happens to have too much bend, usually, to the left. So, um, and that prohibits her from being able to quicken up that step because her rib cage is out here and I've got to send her rib cage up stri straight and work on that step. Because the spin is all about the step. Step over, step over, step over. We go this way, it's step over, step over. So, we'll go her hard way first. And so I'm going to be really conscious of her front right leg because that's the leg that should be stepping over to the left. I'm also going to be very conscious of where her rib cage is. If it's sticking out here to the right where it's not supposed to be or if it's up here underneath her standing up straight. I want her shoulders up straight. I want her hips up straight and her rib cage. And then I just want her to step and step. And at the very end of all of it, I would like her head to tip a tiny bit to the inside. So that's a lot of a lot of stuff for her to do, um, but it becomes, you know, a daily checklist of just going over this stuff. Now, when I start my spin, the first thing that I do is drop my hips down. 
And what I mean by that is you have a tailbone that, that you usually sit on, kind of sitting up on your crotch, which is you can feel your tailbone on that saddle. And I want to take that tailbone, just like somebody karate chopped me, and I want to put it underneath me and put the pockets of my pants down in this saddle and have my tailbone point towards her ears. Instead of sitting up straight with my butt sticking out, I want to tuck and go under. So that's the first thing I do. If I want her to rock back onto her hips in the spin, then I have to be on my hips in the spin. The second thing that I'll do is um, release the leg in the direction I'm going. In this case, we're gonna go left. So I'm gonna release my left leg. So I'm gonna drop my hips. I call it opening the door or releasing my left leg. I'm then gonna guide my horse and then I'm going to bump my right leg just a little bit to start her. Now, when she's going, I don't have to keep bumping my right leg. I do have to keep my guide on, but I don't have to keep bumping my leg. When she stops, I'll bump my leg. Or if I need to um, straighten up her rib cage. Okay, so. She feels very down in her shoulders. Um, she wandered around a little bit when I asked her to start. Uh, There's a few times that she kind of checked, like, am I supposed to stop because I'm talking? And, it, and that kind of felt like sloppy mess to me. So we're going to try it again. I'm going to sink my hips down, release my left leg, guide. There, that's better. So I'm going to keep my guide on right here. I'll bump my leg because I wanted her rib cage to straighten up, bump my leg. So she's having a tendency to be magnetized that way. So what I have to do is make myself ride towards the camera, ride this way. So every time she goes back there, I'm gonna wave my leg a little bit and I'm gonna use the energy of my body to surge this way. But then when I go that way, I'm gonna release the energy of my body. So. I'm going to start again. The start is very important and always overlooked. Be very smooth in your start, and the start should be a direct step to the left. Sit, release the left leg, guide, bump your right leg. Now remember, energy to the camera, to the camera, to the camera, to the camera. Whoa. All right, that was much better. But I rode her in such a manner to, to fix her polarization or her magnet. She was magnetized that way. She was being pulled that way. So I rode her hard this way. Now we'll go ahead and try the other way. When we go this way, it'll be the same thing. I will drop my hips. I will release my right leg. I will guide my hand to the right and I will bump my leg until she goes. Okay, perfect example. Did everybody see what happened right there? Instead of taking the first step to the right, she walked forward. She did a, a wheelie, we call it. She went forward and kind of hooked into that spin. That is not what she was supposed to do. She was supposed to sit down on her hips and step right. Instead, she walked forward and did a, did a loop before she got into her spin. So this time, I'm going to ask her a little bit harder with my left leg. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to guide her over, and I'm going to ask her. There. That time, she stepped to the right. So right there, she kind of checked on my guide. Ooh. Okay, so remember I told you that she spins better to the right before, and I can feel it there. She's just straighter and stronger and, and hooks in better to the right. So I'm still going to go again because I felt like it was a little um, stressed instead of relaxed, and I just want her to relax. This is just a daily routine. I might soften her in the face and collect her up a little bit and just ask her to relax. I'm just looking for a little more relaxation. I felt like that spin was a little on the muscle because we went and showed her yesterday and I just want her to relax. So release, drop my hips, release my leg. There. Ooh. Okay, that was a lot more relaxed. I don't feel like it was quite as tight. She wasn't checking on my guide. Um, I felt a lot better about that spin. So now I'm going to go back to the left because I know she's not as good to the left, which means I need a little more practice to the left. And 
it's really about building confidence. I just want her to be really confident. There's a lot of things I can do to help her and grab a hold of her. Um, but the more I do to this mare, the, the hotter she gets and the more worried about everything she gets. She's got a lot of try in her, so I just want to just let her find her way. I've got to remember that she's polar, polarized back that way and ride towards the camera and um, I'm going to work on her step. Sit on my butt, release my left leg, guide my rein, bump my right leg, polarized to the camera, to the camera, to the camera, to the camera. So you can see where she's misstepping there. This is what I'm talking about and needing to develop this step to the left. Ride her back up here. There's a rhythm to that step, or there should be, that she doesn't have to the left. It kind of goes bump, 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 bump. So we're going to try it again. Sit, release the left leg. Rhythm. Looking for that rhythm. See all that misstepping? Kick her a little bit. Now I'm going to lift her up a little bit. I'm just trying to help her create that step. There. Woo, she got dizzy. Oh. Just let her catch her breath for a minute and find her feet. We're going to ride back up here where we wanted to be. And we're going to try it again. You're a good girl. You're all right. It's not a big deal. You don't want to make any of this a big deal. You don't want to make them hate the spin or think this is a big deal. Just let them relax and you're just fumbling through it. You know, the worst thing that happened to her is I softly picked up on her and bumped my leg a little bit and just which elevated her shoulders and just helped her with that step. Get a little collection. And see right there, she thought about going. So I'm going to let her relax. Ask for that collection again. Let her relax. There. That's where you're supposed to be. Don't be afraid to move around on them so that every time you make a movement, they're not just thinking about going. You know, I can move my feet. I can move. I can move around. She doesn't have to think about. Huh! I don't want her so much on the muscle that she's thinking like that. Ask for that collection. Didn't get it. Shorten up. There. Then after I have that collection, relax. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work on that step to the left again. She's looking off. There's some movement out there to the left. So she keeps looking out there. So I'm going to get after her here a little bit because I'm going to tell her, it doesn't matter what's going on out there. You need to focus on me. Okay, now she's dropped her head and a little bit more focused on me. She's still, there's some tractors, there's some stuff going on over there, but she doesn't have her head up looking over the fence. So, now we'll go ahead and release, sit, guide. Oh, much better. It was a little bit on the muscle, but she kept her body in a lot better frame. And um, worked, she had a lot better step to her. Um, it was really good. I'll go ahead and do it one more time, just to try to get her to relax a little bit. Um, but I was really happy and pleased with that spin right there. I felt like she sat on her butt, she lifted her shoulders, and she tried. So, go ahead and sit. Good. Okay, it wasn't perfect, but it was better. It was a good place to stop. Um, I felt like her shoulders were a little low at start, but then she picked them up. That was a little bit of a misstep, but... She's trying and she relaxed. It's enough for today. We've all got tomorrow. 1% for 100 days gives you 100%, not 100% in one day. So um, that's kind of it for today. On a horse like this, I might go work on stopping or rollbacks or if there's anywhere else in my pattern I feel like I need to work on. Um, and that would be a, a daily routine for, for this horse. So good luck with your horses at home, and I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, you can... Um, Look at some of the other videos on YouTube. Email me, text me, call me. Um, we're here for you in Acampo, California. Thank you.